All right. Thank you, guys. Let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer first, can we? Thank you, Father. We're grateful for another time to be able to unpack uh, the details of how we structure a ministry and that there is a theology to the methodology. There's a structure that's not just pragmatic, but it actually um, kind of formulates what it takes to help someone learn something through the scripture. And then not to be caught up in all the system of, of the methodology, but yet um, understand that there is a, a way to understand and to use, and to learn some of these great principles. So thank you for our time together. My friends in this room, we ask your blessing on this time together in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, so thank you for making the way over here. I think maybe the rain kept us from having more than 100. And for those who are that's just hearing this recording, there could be up to 100 in this room right now. So it's a very good-sized crowd. Very thankful we're up to 100. <laughs> and that's pretty good, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's just nonsense. That's what my wife would say. That's why she's not here. I told her to stand the other side of me. So what I wanted to do, did she have some uh, handouts? She said it's the same one twice, so if you wanted it, you could email it to make it perfect. She said they got the same one in both emails earlier. Well, uh, I guess you could, you want to have her print this for everybody? Sure. Uh, just, you can do a front and back and just give me my copy back, and I'm okay. going gonna to walk through this with them okay. while they're doing that. And this is an exact copy of what's on the PowerPoint here. Now I just want to walk you through that process um, in the PowerPoint. So I'll move this over just a little bit where I can stand here and at least the recorder can maybe work through this. So what I do is I have a system um, that I use. And what I did it when I first started in, um, in biblical counseling, this is about I mean, I was being trained all through the late 90s, and I wasn't even in the certification process till 99. But I started my second church in 2002 in St. Louis, and I, I wasn't going to wait around for somebody to say, yeah, Mark, you, you, can, uh, you can train somebody. I just I had a small flock, you know, six, eight, ten people at my church plant, and I said, I'm going to start training them. I, I mean, I just looked it up, I figured out what to do, went to the scriptures, formulated it. And that's sort of kind of growing into this thing. And then I had other mentors helping me. And so it kind of evolved. And so today it's kind of working where I've been through several counseling centers as a director and the chair of a, count, of a seminary in biblical counseling. So all this has sort of kind of formulated itself and grown and into this process I'm in today. So the church I'm working for now, Timberlake Baptist Church, um, I use this system. Now this is not sanctioned by anybody else. It's not copied anywhere, so it's subject to change, and I'd be glad to give you whatever information I have. But this is really helpful for me, for people to understand I'm in Module 1, Module 2, Module 3, and the church is now in sync with these things. And I'll, I'll, I'll identify some of the terms. So my goal, let me just give you a quick goal about this, and then we're gonna, I'm going to talk to you about the flow chart. She's going to bring these over to you. My goal was to get everybody in the church trained. Because I wanted everybody to get trained in such a way that they, would, they could infiltrate their own families with biblical counseling. And it was very helpful because I use it as a discipleship tool. And of course, it really is good at this and really wants to help other people. Then we move them and start utilizing them in biblical counseling. Thank you, Ron. Oh, OK. <laughs> and so, um, so what I do is I just started. Um, helping people get involved in it. So at our membership classes, I have a segment of that because all the elders introduce themselves, give their testimonies, and then I talk about um, I'm the ground assault of the air assault from the Word of God from the, from the pulpit. We're the ground assault with the Word of God in people's lives, Acts 20-20. He said, I didn't neglect you from personally, you know, per privately with the Word of God and publicly from door to door. So anyway... Uh, Paul used that term. I sort of had that same approach to it. And so uh, this system came out of that. Their need for everybody to go through it. So for you to have an exclusivity of trying to get people just to do biblical counseling, not a good idea. You want it to be much more organic. You want it to be much more user-friendly. You want it to be sort of their normal 
process of discipleship. You want that just to integrate into their life and their hearts. So now with my own children, it's gone that far than my grandchildren. So you can see it filtering down and purges. What happens is as sufficiency of scripture infiltrates the people, it purges psychologized thinking. It just purges it. So you can see it, it, and it's not an exact thing, but the paradigm shift of thinking starts changing, 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 and pretty soon it's like, that's not an option. Humanism is not an option. But it takes a while. So in our church, we're somewhere between five and 650. I don't know exactly what it is, a couple of services, I don't know how many. But it's starting to really uh, affect people. I think I'm training around 100 to 120 people a year from just our church. And people in the community pay to come to my classes. They pay the church. They don't pay me. And it's a small nominal fee, but it, it helps them. And then we try to infiltrate their churches and help their pastors start this again. So it's not a money-making thing, but we're trying to help people uh, you know, to know about biblical counseling. So it's, it's really a neat system. It's very, very helpful. It's helped because we're in the Mecca in, in Lynchburg, Virginia, Central Virginia. We're in the Mecca of Christian psychology. We have Liberty University written all the books on how to integrate the scripture with psychology. It's, it's, in fact, they're not just apathetic towards neuthetic counseling. They are adamantly opposed to it. You'd think it, almost like a secular um, psychologist would go after you. They, they're really opposed to it. They're just appalled that you would think that there's nothing professional about psychology and that God gave us Freud and Adler, and Rogers, and he sanctified their secular stuff. <laughs> nonsense, nonsense. So anyway, it's okay, but um, I'm working the system there where I'm, I'm trying to change their thinking from the inside out. From the inside out. You can do the same thing. You can make it very simple. I'm just going to show you how I do this. This is kind of an over, overview of this. I don't have time to go into all this, but I can tell you that you've got all the things on the list here, and you're welcome to use this at any level okay and i have my email there you can and i can guide and direct you through any of that process all right so let's let's just take gander uh, and see how far we go um it's just an expanded view so uh, trying to think that's at work sean i know isn't that crazy okay so, can you find out where the other PowerPoint is? That's I mean, I wish I was that smart to do Mark Shaw. You know, I wouldn't mind it. We're both big and we're both Marks. I mean, I, I, mean, I can see how they get that confused. You know, I just go with it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think, uh, think maybe you had to talk to them. But anyway, okay, so let's just, you, you got your papers or not? You don't, do you? Okay. So, um, let me just talk to you about, while they're, I'm waiting, they might be get this here. Let me talk to you about the two ways that we help supervise people. Let's start from the backside work in. If you just took a, a circle, I don't see a crayon over here, a stick. But if you took, uh, if you just ma imagine a circle and you saw many arrows pointing out of this thing, you know, like an arrow with the arrows pointing out in every direction. And then you took a, a, a literal a line that's linear, you know, that's a line, it has arrows going down the, air, the line. You would have linear versus omnidirectional. Now, I just made this up. This, I have to be honest with you, I mean, it's on tape, so I don't lie about it, right? Sorry, Mom. Anyway, um, so anyway, what I did was, in, in ACBC, just showing some comparisons, nobody's bad, nobody's good here. Just making, it's my own little um, disclaimer. So I'm just saying, in that process, it's linear. My son is in medical school, everything's linear. So they don't want you cutting people open or doing examinations without you understanding the science, okay? So everything's linear. But in counseling, I didn't find that to be very helpful. And counseling wasn't very helpful for a couple reasons. I don't want to get too sidetracked, but one reason was um, people lose interest really fast. Now, this is very practical for you. So you should, you should try to figure this out. 
People lose interest quick, so you'll lose them. For instance, I used to teach for Dr. Dave Tyler in St. Louis. I was teaching one of his modules. He had four modules. I would come in from St. Louis, and he was in um, Edwardsville area. Um, and I would teach one of his classes for him. And I'm in 103. He taught 101. That had the largest class, like 60 people in it. And they would sign up, pay big money. And by the time they got to me, I had 12 or 15 people. And I kept saying, hey, Doc, uh, do, you, do you know where this fallout is happening? <laughs> like, well, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, you had 57 people. I shouldn't have 12. I don't understand this. You know, there might be some fallout because some people come in and want to be a counselor and they find out that it's biblical counseling and it's not psychology and I can see them stage left and leave. That's fine. I can understand that. So, um, yeah, so I knew there was a problem and I was having a similar problem as well. I've had people that came to 101 and I gave them the philosophy of counseling and they saw the, the, the continuum, which is over here to the left, is liberal, to the right is conservative, and they would see all their universities they attended right here in the middle, they were compromising integrationist, and they were pretty upset, and I, I saw, they knew there was a fallout, so I had to, I had to try to get a system to close the gap on the fallout, so here's what I did is to keep them interested, go back to the omnidirectional versus linear, I started doing all my training omnidirectional, so I don't know, you got, you're doing training yourself? No. Okay. Anybody here doing training other than Pastor Kevin? Okay, so here's the thing. If you're doing training, here's what happens. You can do several things at one time. Now, my wife's good at that. I'm not. But So here's what I'm saying is that you can, a person can read a book and be reading through the book. And then the pastor says, hey, I got this person to counsel. Would you come in and help me do some counseling? Oh, then you go. The Lord is opening up an opportunity. You go and you do some counseling. And then all of a sudden at night, you want to take a break. You've been reading a book and you did some counseling, observation. All these things are required on the linear level, step by step. But omnidirectional, you're doing a lot of things at one time. And they can go and click on there and they can watch video observations of counseling and start getting credit for that. And so then they, they download the question number one and they look at that question and say, wow, what is that? So they go to Wayne Grudem's systematic theology book and they start looking it up, doing a little research and they get tired of that. They go back to their book and they're starting to read their book. And then a pastor calls and says, hey, you got another counseling appointment, would you come in? Sure. So the omnidirectional approach requires all the necessary things in the syllabi that's already designed for you to complete all these things but everybody assumes it's linear, and I'm telling you it's not. It doesn't have to be. That's the secret weapon. Okay, the secret weapon is you can do a lot of things at one time. But I guarantee if I give them a log sheet and I say, I want you to document everything in your activity, your training activity, you log it in here. So you'll have an entry. I watched Pastor do a counseling session. I did a counseling session with a team. Um, I watched a video, two videos. I read half of uh, Competent to Counsel by Adams. I, and they, they're just, every, just logging all this stuff, and they have to have, is that it? That's it. Okay, sweet. So they have to have all these things finished before it's over with. All these things must be completed. So it's okay, because in the omnidirectional approach, this might have 80%, this might have 20%, here might be 60%. Some things are 100% finished. Everything has to be 100% and then we're certified. So while some are reading a book, I'm also watching how they counsel or they're watching me counsel. And so it does, it, it helps keep the interest level up. They're having some continuity of training. I'm trusting the Lord that he's going to provide us some of these areas for counseling training. It keeps them in the fight. And what's neat about it, it accelerates the process. Now, I, I have more counselors. I have a ton of counselors in training. Lots of them. I call them interns. And, uh, and lots of interns. A lot of people want to get interns. People write me letters saying, hey, can you get me in the AIM class? I'll tell you what that is in a minute. I, because you have, to be a, a, you have to be selected by our elders to go through AIM. People in the community can pay for it if they want. But in our church, if you go through AIM training, advanced intensive module training, mentorship, if you go through that advanced training, 
I intend on using you in the church as a, in the counseling center. That's different than just counseling in the church. So the elders have to prove that. Well, I've got lots of people doing this because I'm getting, I'm, it's starting to funnel now. It's, it's starting, to, starting to funnel because people are, ex, the accelerated process in the omnidirectional approach to training. Is everybody with me on that? Is it okay? You with me? Because if it's not clear, just raise your hand. I mean, tell me. Cut me off. So <clears throat> I don't use the linear. I've had, only people I've had problems with were other academics who criticize me, who send me hate mail, who say they're going to tell on me. I'm old. I'm probably going to die soon, so I don't care who tells on me, right? I mean, I'm like, go ahead, tell on me. I've already talked to the Lord about it. So anyway, and now all of a sudden, two of the four organizations are using omnidirectional mentorship. Isn't that interesting? So don't be afraid to, be, uh, to work through these things. You say, well, why are they doing observations? They, need, they haven't even finished their training. I, I, I tell them, I have some basic things they have to do, which is the fundamentals training, module 101, 102, 103, is your basic fundamentals in every organization, ACBC, IABC, FBC, and TAC, all require 30 to 36 hours of fundamentals training. So while you're in that and you're reading your books and, a, and a, an opportunity comes up for them to observe counseling, I say, take it log it. Well, I'm, I'm going to do this. So this guy wants me to count, counsel him. Log it. I know, but I wanted to read this book on curing the heart and sit. Fine. Log it. I want an accurate log. Now, let me give the the tail that's wagging the dog. The activity log completed is your goal as a trainer. I'm telling you what we do at TBC, and I'm going to make it a lot clearer as we go through this process. So when they, before they can be trained, before they can be certified, we have to have a letter from their pastor that they intend on using them and there's nothing wrong with them. They're not Jehovah's Witnesses or whacked out or going over here. They're, you know, one, one lady was trying to be certified. I've had several of them actually in the seminary. They were trying to be certified while they're divorcing their husbands. I'm like, no, I think uh, you need to go to Massachusetts and take a seat. Kevin Kirby, maybe you can do that. Yeah, maybe you'll prove that. I, I won't do that. Just kidding. But I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, sometimes you get those things that you're like, and for us, it's like, that's a no-brainer. What am I doing? So you, the pastor has to be approved of these things. I see the paperwork. I go through the log. The entire activity log has all the forms of their, every time they did a counseling session, I got a counseling report. I can look at it. I'm, I'm, inter, I'm actually reviewing this thing quarterly or at least every month I have some things I'm looking at. Bring your file, let me look at it. And I'm supervising, 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 including the 50 hours of supervised counsel. And so all of this documentation, that should have been the word I use, is inside a folder and the top part is all activity log. Could be 10 pages, you know, six pages. I don't know what it is. Three pages maybe, I don't know. But it should document all their training, all their requirements, everything on the syllabi. That's the books, the book reports, the observations, the reading requirements, and the exams. And then all the documentation paperwork's behind there, but the top is, uh, and so I can open up. I got a summary of all their training and the totals. I'm going through and I'm looking at everything. They've got all the reports. They read the books. I get all the stuff. I get a note from the pastor, get a letter from him. Then I send a certified letter to the FBC headquarters and we certify them and they get a certificate in the mail. That's how we do it. Okay? That was just one other step before I talk you through this here. One other step is I do two certifications. Actually, I do two certificates. One certification. Two certificates. I give them a certificate of completion for going through my class because my training center is certified in all the organizations except CCEF, and you kind of have to have one foot in psychology in order to get that. They wouldn't admit that, I'm just telling you that, from 20 years plus of being involved in this. So I wouldn't mind it, it's just, it's very academic, I'm very exhausted by doing that, probably wouldn't, it's not necessary, nobody's really wanting that, so in my case, I'm just helping the saints in the church. So. I have, at the end of a church service, uh, whatever people graduated, I have a list, I have a stack of certificates, and 
We take five minutes and I call people up in the service, people clap and we say, here, they complete this, this is a certificate, a completion. This is not certified counseling. They're, they're completing the process and they're equipped to disciple, they're equipped to be advocates and help people in the church. And you can reach into these people, they're gonna be very helpful in your ministry and people they are excited and they, they bring their families and they're dressed up and it, it's really exciting. It really is a, a neat time. Our pastor, he, he just so, so kind to me and gracious and gives me his time. He goes, he calls it my diploma mill. So don't use that. Don't use that. But uh, yeah, so anyway, that's what we do. And then, then when, I, when you know, FPC gets the certificate, they mail it off. Now, when you got that little certificate in your hand, that certificate completion, and later on you decide you want to go to ACBC, I got a lady in the community that says, I only want ACBC. I said, okay. So she comes through the training, pay your way through the training, and I give her a certificate. Now she can scan that in the, as a PDF and ACBC takes it, and now she's in phase two that quick. Now she, I want to go to IABC, that's fine. She takes a little thing, scans it, PDF, boom. And I'm on their list, oh, you went to this Timberlake Biblical Counseling Training Center. Yeah, yeah, okay, phase two, that fast. So I give them a certificate, I keep a copy of that in their file, when they turn in their activity log before I certify them. All the people who've ever been certified, just as starting from the back working in, I have a hard copy of their files. I do not trust all these digital files on the cloud right now because China might own them. I love China though, it's fine. Okay, I just want to, that's my little <laughs> disclaimer. Uh, but yeah, I'm serious. So I, I have make everybody give me a hard copy of all the you know data goes down and, and you know whatever they call it. I, I just want a hard copy. I've got a file just a, and it's just one file. It says their name on it and it's got everything in there. And if FBC wanted to audit any of those things, they call them say I need um, you know Bob Jones. I need uh, I need look at his activity log or send me some send me his book report. So just send me a copy of some and I can take a copy and send it off. And they could audit. My, my files are open for to be audited if they want to be audited. So I keep one hard copy on file. I don't keep all, everything. I keep one hard copy of the, of the certified thing on file. That's it. I have one file folder per student. Shouldn't take much. Okay, questions or thoughts up to this point? We start from the back working in. Okay? You, okay. Yes? You said two certificates? I do one. Well, the first certificate I give, I generate from my own church. It's a certificate of completion. And then FBC sends the certification certificate. And they have to pay that fee with FBC. And they get that in the mail. Now, here's what I do, uh, Kevin, to make that clear. I have FBC send it to me so I can award them. You know, if I, sometimes I want to put it in a, in a frame. Other times I just want, I want to give it to them because we might want to. I somebody send me two. I want to put one in our training center. They're one of our, and then I give one to them to put in their home to, to display as well. So I have them. I don't, otherwise they send it to them in their address, home address. And that's fine if they don't go to my church, but if they go to my church, I make a little bit bigger deal out of that. Okay, so you have to be a little flexible. All four of us, five of us on the board will help you solve that. That's not a problem. You can, you can answer that. Okay, let's, let's break through some of this. Um, and we got to go pretty quick. Basically, when you go to the MIT, MIT means modular intensive training. Now, what I did was traditional training is I had a two-hour lecture per lesson or six lessons per module. Um, so what I did was I found out I, I surveyed all my students that graduated from traditional class. I think that's what they do here at Faith, too. Do they meet every Thursday, Friday for a while, or do you do, you do Thursday, Friday, Saturday? How does that work? Yeah, and so that's one module, right? That's hope. And then heart. Okay, that's how I started doing it because I was doing every Tuesday night, or I did some classes on Tuesday, some on Thursday. And I thought this is the way to do it because it takes time. I can work through it on uh, two hours and teaching lecture on forgiveness and whatever, the, wherever lesson we're on. And I thought it would be helpful. But once I started surveying and querying all these people, and I compared them to my students that I did weekend intensives, there was no difference. So I said, I am not going to kill myself teaching two or three hours a week when, they peop when everybody gets it the same. Either nobody's getting it, everybody's about the same, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna do weekend intensives. So I changed my traditional classes from module 101 
to MIT 101, modular intensive training. How much time do we have left, you know? Plenty of time, okay. So, um, okay. So that's what the MIT means. And, and so we and uh, FPC will be changing our format to module 101, 2, 3. We'll be doing this similar. We won't be calling it MIT, but we'll be calling it module 101, module 102, 103, and 104, which is my current AIM class. So we're going to have all those videos, all that training. And what's going to be neat about it, if you're already a trainer, teacher, pastor, then you'll know that when you do module 104, which was used to be my AIM class, you supervise it. You play it video, you stop and ask questions, you interject, you help them, you walk around, everybody has their laptop out, you help them with the first question. I, get, I, have, a, I have two flash drives and it has a template of the questions. And they load them on their computers and it's, there's the Word document right there and it could be revised and everything, you know. Load them and start passing them around and load, pass, load, pass. Then when you get ready to go, everybody's working, we take some time, take a break, you load that, you write down some notes on it. And then they go home and then they finalize it before the next class. Okay? So, um, but that's what MIT really is. Um, and so, everybody registers $25 for a seat. I don't care if it's the pastor's son. Okay, I do that because good intentioned people take free as cheap. Alright, so they don't. I've had 25, 30, 40 people register for a class out of 17. Now that's not bad, but a church our size and we had, you know, 20, 30 people register and I only have 15 or 17 show up. Oh yeah, you know, like something came up. All of a sudden I started charging $25 for seat time and then I gave them their free handouts. Okay? So the handouts are free, but they paid for the seat time, which is only $25 registration fee, that it's non-refundable. All of a sudden, I've got about a 90% attendance. Just FYI, a little trick, marketing trick, I guess, I don't know. But that's what I do. Um, recommended books here, Competent to Counsel is always a Module 101 or MIT 101. The uh, Christian Theology of Christian Counseling is Adam's second book, which is more detailed in Module 102, Methodologies, so I'll get to that. And then number three in the last class was the manual. I give them half of that they have to read. Those are three major books and you have to read those. Those all go to your reading requirements and your syllabus. Okay? Uh, and then in between times, we give them the self-confrontation. If they're going to be certified, they have to do lessons one through eight, at least half of the homework and half of the devotions on each lesson. Anybody familiar with the self-confrontation manual? One? All right, you need to write this down could change your life. Self-confrontation man, if you've never heard of it. Just write this website down. I mean, you, let me tell you something, honestly. When I repented this, what I went through, this what, this is a training system in itself. It's bcfministries.org. bcfministries, bcf, boy Charles Frank. BCF Ministries, that's R I E S, dot org. And they have all the training facts, they have training files in there. They have pastors, uh, all kinds of different classes, Living Victorious Life, and all kinds of things. We sell about 300 of those. It's about $25 a manual. We sell about 300 a year at Timberland. Amazing. Because the first part is all how, how you actually change in the Bible. Lessons one through eight, the first two lessons are the gospel in detail. Lesson one and two. So you can change biblically, lesson one and two. One through eight, how do you change? What's the change process look like in sanctification? And then nine and ten is the theology of self, part one and two. And it goes, so I do that inside on the second part. You'll see that. So between this month, I do one every month. I got one coming up in July. And then I have one in August and September. That covers, that covers my three major ones. And then those who are qualified or those who want to be certified, I, I do an MIT 104, what I call AIM, Advanced Intensive Mentorship. And that's where I teach them the, the exams. And there's 10 weeks in that. So anyway, in between this, I have them do one of the FBC's videos, the student handout, the first video. 
They do the first eight lessons. This is in a month. They got a whole month to do this and give as much as they want. And that's not a time frame. It's not required to get into the next class. But it seems doable. Nobody's, nobody's arguing. So they get my tr brick and mortar training. They get FBC's videos. And I've seen a stronger, more competent counselor coming out of this. They got, they got the self-confrontation manual, which is amazing manual by John Broker. It's amazing. It's not narrative. It's written in a, in a manual form. So it's not gooey narratives that you have to try to look through. It's bullet points. And here's, some, here's a thesis statement. It's beautiful. And it has devotions and homework on every lesson. The eight. So they get up in the morning do devotion number one. Before they go to bed, do homework number one. It's beautiful. It's structured. Easy. And then they watch the videos. So I got three ways I'm infiltrating their hearts. By the time I get them as counselors, they're really good. They're very competent and capable, and I didn't have to extend any more energy. Okay? Um, uh, let's see. The administrator will provide MIT 101 hard copy notes. Okay, that's just uh, student stuff. Here's 102. 101, MIT 101 was, was fundamentals. And that was mostly like, uh, what's the difference between biblical counseling and psychology? What, what, tell me about anthropology. What's that got to do with the, the study of man and the nature of man? And how they pervert anthropology. Man is a center. Christ is center for us. Mm -hmm. and, and so 101 is, a, is, is it shakes them up because it shows them that, hey, we're not all allies here in the sense of walking together as one. The kind of an aimless three thing that we walk together. No, it's not like that. Uh, the psychologist wants to help them, and they believe that they, God doesn't want them to hurt. We know that God wants us, God wants to be glorified in us in some way. We're not trying to hurt anybody. We don't love suffering, but sometimes, most of the time, suffering has a purpose. Okay? So this first class shakes them up a little bit. 102 is more methodology, idols of the heart, how the change process actually happens. Uh, I get into forgiveness. I get into the details of idolatry, you know, so the idols of the heart. That's the methodology. So what do you do when you sit down and counsel? Well, and you find and you isolate the problem. Well, you're going to work through those issues. That's module 102. That's MIT 102. Okay? Second book is the Theology of Christian Counseling. And then look at lessons 9 through 12. Homework and devotions. In between times. They take a weekend class with me. And then before that next one comes up the next month, they just got to do that small amount of lessons, uh, self-confrontation. They got to watch the videos on hope. Now we're in heart, which is 102, or going to be 102 now. And they do that. Um, and then I tell them, bring their Bible with them, the one they're going to be counseling. That's a trip, a trick, and a tip. Always have the people you're training bring the Bible they're going to use in counseling. Let me tell you why. So, very helpful. I started that with this particular Bible. And so all my counseling notes are in here, and all my illustrations for counseling I put in the back. So every page in the back is covered with notes and diagrams that I use in counseling, every page. Every diagram I'll ever use is in here, how the heart functions, how, we, how the dynamic of, of marriage. Every page is in here, front and back, front and back. I got simplified evangelism and abbreviated evangelism going through the whole process. I've got, um, I mean, everything on here is, is set up for, I even have um, the put off and put on. I've got everything you can imagine here all written down. Seven traits of worldly sorrow, seven traits of true repentance. I don't, I, there's a resource. This whole book is written out. I got everything I use and I got all this from my training. I use my one Bible. This becomes your encyclopedia for your counseling ministry. Very helpful. Very helpful. Okay? And so when I sit down and I have this, it just seems like it doesn't matter what the problem is. The Lord is helping me through this process. All right? I, I've got this here. I have a little more confidence in it. I don't remember everything I've remembered before. And I have these things, are good reference notes, and I'm, I'm following along. And, uh, and I have them helpful. So if they're fragmented and writing notes on napkins and on their phone, and it's, it's not helpful. They need a central resource for all these things to happen. And then um, 
So that's more administrative stuff. So the practical theology is what I call 103. What is practical theology? You know, how to deal with anxiety, how to deal with depression, how to deal with anger, how to deal with your addictions, how do you deal with any of these parent, parenting, marriage, family, all those specific issues I did in module 103. Can anybody tell me why MIT 103 has all the practical theology on I didn't start with that? Why? Anybody know? I'm sorry? Okay, so, so if, you, if you're a student and you have some depression issues, where would you want me to start? 101 or 103? Because I'm going to teach on depression in 103. You see, that's why I don't start there. Because if you don't understand the fundamentals of counseling and you don't understand the, the methodology of getting to the heart of issues and what change is about, you're not ready to deal with your depression or anxiety. You see that? So that's why, I, and you know, I find out, I used to do it this way, I thought, well, it's popular, I mean, it's 50 people in here, wonderful. Now, in my next class, I have like eight or 10, because they, they got what they wanted, just enough to put a Band-Aid on the problem, right? So I don't do that. I want, I want you to know what the truth is and where that is all, why the heart is so evil and wicked and deceptive and why this is a repeat problem and why this becomes an issue. And it's a symptom, your depression is a symptom of a problem. Okay, so they, in this last part, they do self confrontation 13 through 22, and it ends it there. That's it. 23 is an exam, like, how do you use this in ministry? 13 through 22 is all the depression, anger, bitterness, everything that you need to, for practical application with devotion and with homework is all in the self confrontation manual. It's like, like having a walking. It's like having a, a, a written J. Adams right in front of you. It's so concise, it's simple, it's laid out perfectly, and a person doesn't know anything about counseling who just has a normal use of the Bible can take that manual and the Bible and help anybody almost 80% of everything. It's not a problem. You must have that. bcfministries.org. Okay, so uh, anybody who's non-TBC pays 225 to get in a module. So my, I'm penalizing you for not having to go into a church that has biblical counseling training. And they're supporting my biblical counseling training so I can actually produce more training and, and pay for more counselors and help more people. And so we're fishing in the community. And, um, and so that's what we do. But everybody who comes to TBC gets free. So we had a lot of people join the church. One lady just joined the church not long ago because she wanted to go and she didn't have a lot of money. She wanted to come, but she, it would cost her $1,000 for services and everything and supervision and everything. And she said, I'm gonna, I, I like your church. I think I'm going to go to the church. Well, you get the free training. That's how we do it. And, but you have to serve here. Um, so the, intent, the advanced intensive mentorship is what I call AIM training. We call that 105 or, or 104, rather, in the future. But you have to complete. In order to get into that 104, you have to complete 101 through 103. Here's another thing we're telling you is that if they, I've had people, many people finish 101 and then they're out of town that weekend, they can't do 102. I don't let them go to an AIM class. I don't let them go to 104. I let them work through stuff, but they have to take that training. Have to. It's a must. Prerequisite. Okay? So, they don't want to take it in order they want it. they got to take it in order they will understand it better. Um, I have every student do liability insurance. There's a cheap student rate. It's something like $45 a year to get a million dollars of liability insurance. And it's an application you fill in. You fill in while you're a student in my class. And it lasts for a year or two. And you send it in and you got insurance while you're counseling. You've got additional liability insurance. I do that because we did that at the seminary and I just kept it. Um, okay. Um, so this is all about AIM and I'll talk to you about that in a few minutes. So the certification process at, at Timberlake Biblical Counseling Training Center. Um, here's the affiliated organizations. So they graduate, uh, and they, they qualify to do one of two things. Now, have you got your little flow chart with you? It should look something like this. You see it? Okay. So when you come in, most of the people who come in, come in through the certified certificate track, the discipleship advocacy on the left. They're just testing it out. Let me see what this is about. And they learn a lot about it, and they come in. And once they've gone through the training, then I can, I can assign them to some of my counselors to help them. 
not to counsel, but to help them. Like, let's, for instance, I got a guy who's come in and, and uh, Pastor Kevin has asked me to, he wants to do some counseling, so he's, he's in our ministry. I, I give him a counselee. And then I, I assign somebody else to him as an advocate. Well, that advocate just maybe can attend the, the counseling with the counselor, with the counselee. Uh, the advocate is briefed on some things that he wants them to work with them on, helps them with their homework, helps them come to church, maybe watch their kids, takes them out to dinner, calls them up and prays with them. He starts building a relationship and is actually the bridge from our counseling center to the body. And I see a lot of these people in membership classes. So at this, I've been doing this now for 20 years this way. In every single ministry, the Lord has graced me with, with growth because it's discipleship face-to-face, one-on-one with people who are broken and hurt, and they, they love the, the attention and the help and the assistance they get. So they go through, they have to go through 101, 102, 103, and then aim class, they come up from 103, and it comes over here, and I have a four-hour training class for advocates. How to use this to help the counseling ministry. Might just do a Bible study. I'll give a say. Uh, I use the Walk of Repentance by Steve Gallagher. The, his guys are here, and uh, I'll just say I want you to just go through and look for pay dirt. Okay, I want you to write this term down. Pay dirt. When you think about pay dirt, what are you thinking? Gold, right? Remember they dig for gold, and they would dig and they move a lot of soil to find one little nugget of gold. Remember that? they pan and they would dig and dig and dig in the, in the caves and they'd keep moving a lot of rock to get one piece of gold. I have people move a lot of scripture to find one principle. Pay dirt is any truth that impacts you for change. Any truth that impacts you for change. So it looks like busy work on the outside because I'm going to read a book. It looks like busy work when I have them write out their devotions, when I have them uh, fill out log sheets and journals. And that's a lot of busy work. No, that's moving soil, moving the word of God, looking for the Holy Spirit to take one nugget of truth and impact you. And so when I talk to them, I want to know where the pay dirt is. That's why we use that term. What's the pay dirt? I just say every day I've got three or four guys who email me um, their devotions every day. Um, Here's a guy who just sent me one on my phone. He takes a picture of it and sends it to me. His, his devotions and his outline of his devotion and a discussion question that we're going to talk about. And this bottom one is his prayer. I want to know what he's praying to the Lord. Is he asking him for stuff again? Does it look sound rich? You know, like a, a ritualistic, like a, like a Pharisee? Is it heart? I want to see where I can tell if he's repenting or not. And these guys all send me their stuff every day. And I can read it and see... This sounds like you got that out of a book, or this sounds, you know, and I, it's, it kind of helps me, and the Lord helps me with that. And then when I get them there, we can talk about these things. Moving the Word of God, moving the busyness of your homework to find a nugget of truth that I call pay dirt that, that impacts you for change. Okay? It's important. So that's the flow of this thing as it flows through here. So what I do is I, I do it this way. They come in. It's a why. And they're coming in here. They did my training, which is TBC and TC, Timberlake Biblical Counseling Training Center. They come through that training, whether it be advocacy or not. If they want to go further, they go through and they get FBC certification. From my training, FBC certification from here, it wise. Now you want advanced certification. They can call it advanced if you want. You can, you can live with FBC certification the rest of your life. You're going to do fine. I call advance, and so that means you're going to go to ACBC or IABC, one of the two. Now they're comfortable with the certification process. They know how to do the exams. They know how to do supervision. They know how to do activity logs. Now all of a sudden when they get into those academic areas, they're flying through them without a problem. Okay? Sort of how I use it. Questions, thoughts, comments. Okay? AIM class, just to tell you, AIM class, uh, now we call it a module or MIT 104. It's 10 weeks, an hour and a half a week, 10 exam questions. We cover all 10 exam questions. When you finish the last one, you finish the last exam question. You don't have to worry about working that on your own, your own pace. It's all done. Now you can just do counseling to get certified. Okay? Good.
Father, thank you for our time, my friends here. And may this uh, produce fruit, bring glory in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, God bless you. Thank you.